Welcome to the Rogue Report Extra podcast. Uh, my name is Mark and I'm standing in for our usual host, Graham, today. So hopefully we'll, we'll do him proud. Uh, we've got Scunthorpe coming up and I guess we're all feeling quite confident after our first home game. So us grab that late victory over Charlton. Joining us today is a man who knows both teams quite well, having played over 100 games for us in the mid to late 80s and is now scouting for Scunthorpe. So welcome to the podcast, Mr. Paul Lemon. Thank you, Mark. How, how the devil are you? Yes, all's good. All's well. Um, good, good. Yeah, Looking forward to the game on Sunday. Yep, indeed. So for those who don't know, just run us through what you're up to down in Scunthorpe. Basically, um, I, I never go to Scunthorpe. I'd never go to the ground. My job basically is to go and watch the opposition. 80% of my workload is to go and watch the opposition, how they play, how they set up, strengths, weaknesses. And then report back on on software um, to the analyst, who will then pick the bones out of what I've said, and then form their own opinions on the game that's uh, to be played, how we go and beat the opposition, <laughs> and then present it to the lads. Um, the other 20, 25% on my role is to go and watch individual players who my boss is a guy called Lee Turnbull, who was ex Middlesbrough guy and who's been around the, the scouting circuit for a long time than I have um, he sends me out to watch players and report back to him um, on who's good enough who's not good enough and it's just an opinion it's just an opinion there's no right or wrong opinion in football it's just an opinion and then we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there oh cool so uh, hopefully you'll go a bit easy on us for for Sunday then <laughs> well I came up to the Charlton game and I was at half time I was very quietly confident um <laughs> that we could come up there and, and get a result. Uh, the second half was a different performance, as you well know, and sure. and the passion and the desire was there for all to see. And um, as you have been talking about there with the crowd, you know we need to keep the crowd quiet. It's the first thing we need to do. Um, if we don't do that and someone get on top of us, it, it could be a long, long. Sunday afternoon. <laughs> sure, sure. You're right. It was definitely a, a tale of two halves. I think the first half we looked a bit edgy and but... yeah, it was welcome to the League One. I think. I think it was a bit of a an eye opener. Of Charlton. I think Charlton will be up there anyway this year, personally. Mm. Um, and but the physical side came out, and you could you could see it that the physical side of the game something well were off the pace a little bit. Yeah. 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 But he changed the tactics at half time, went with the three at the back, and it worked a treat. And um, the likes of Honeyman and Gooch, who were driving them on when they were struggling first half, kept that going and, and drove someone to a victory. Yeah, totally. I think, I mean, because Jack's obviously new to the league as much as a lot of the players, but he seems to have brought in players who know League One and, and, um, and who yeah. can do that. So, I mean, we've had sort of max power added to the, the ranks since, yes, since that game and so on. Big signing, good signing, and especially for that league. Um, I was at Wigan not so long ago, maybe about two years ago. I was at Wigan two and a half years ago, and Max was there then, and he was he was in the. I think he played a lot of games in the, when they were in League One. Yeah, um, didn't quite do it last season under Cookie, um, but yeah, you know, a great signing for Sunderland and a great signing for for League One. He's he's strong, he's passionate, he's got the desire and enthusiasm, and and he's not bad on the ball. No, no. Were you were you there when Reese James was at Wigan? Was he another one? Yeah, or? yeah, another the, of the left back. Yeah, it was yeah. left back Reese, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from Manchester United, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, is he? At, is he at Sunderland? Is he? Yeah. So he he was one of the the first through the door, and, it, and again, I think it's symptomatic right. of what Jack yeah. trying to build players who can yeah. play at League One level and and perhaps beyond and and yeah. take us up. Oh, so. he, he could play. He could play League One and, and and beyond. Yeah. And but the guy who came on a sub against Charlton that, that day. I mean, I've not seen much of them. Is it Aviedo? Aviedo. Aviedo. Yeah. He, yeah. For me, he's, he he was quality. He was quality. But well, I he, think he the should be. Is a, a problems. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, he's just come back from the World Cup, so he should have something about yeah. him, bless him. Yeah, I don't know but, much um, about him, but he, just first glance, I thought, yeah, you've, you've got quality, mate. He was, yeah, he was he was one of Moyes' guys from Everton who yeah. came um, who came in, in the sort of Premier League time and has lingered around. But yeah, you're right, he, he should be quality for this level. And, and Jerome Sinclair came on and 
looked yeah. a handful, but he, he's going to be out for a while. So, yeah, we'll see yeah, what we're doing. From our point of view, to go and watch it, it's, you know, it's always nice to go and have an eyes on and look at the shape of the team and just get a generalised, you know, how, how they're going to set up against sure. you. Um, but, you know, you can go and watch teams galore, but, and it's, you know, you can pass as many match messages as you want to management and the management can pass as many managers messages as they want to the players, but... Once they go over that white line, it's <laughs> well, absolutely. So, so um, forgive me for sort of changing tack a bit, but if, if talk about your career for a little while, I mean, I remember, if I'm right, you, you were a, a teenager at the club, making your debut as an 18 year old under um, Len Ashurst. Is that right? Yeah, that's. Do you know what you? I I can't remember this far back. To be fair, when you when you told <laughs> me about this, I'm thinking, oh my god, I can't remember until last week. Sometimes, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. I was a I was a schoolboy and I signed schoolboy forms. Um, luckily enough to play with likes of Barry Venice and Nick Pickering, Mark Prudder in the FA Youth Cup yeah. uh, run that we had. You know, I don't know if you can remember, but you probably don't. That we we played at Roker Park. Um, yes, yeah. Against Manchester United and referees knocked them down twenty minutes before kick off and says, "Listen, guys, keep warming up because you're not going out for another half now." They couldn't get everybody in, so. <laughs> You know, as a as a fifteen year old schoolboy still at school, you know, you you know you you know you're at the right club when that happened. Yeah, um, we got beat against Manchester United in the Youth Cup semi final, so that was a great experience. But I played up front in them days, and then you know, I scored goals from sixteen to eighteen year old, you know, in the reserves, and then it was just basically because I was a goal scorer. Um, Laurie McManamy was the one that started to put me wide right. Uh, and and I stayed there, you know, I stayed right. there until until the very end under Dennis Smith. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I was having a look at your stats. I mean, you scored fifteen goals for the club, which was mm. you know in your, in your hundred odd games, which is mm. decent strike rate for a midfielder, around one in seven. So you're right. If you've kind of come from um, a striking yeah. position further deep, how, how was the the change for you then? Was it Laurie that made that switch permanent? It was Laurie that made the switch, and and. It, Looking back, you know, as an 18 year old lad, if if you asked to play in the first team for Sunderland, you know, you're not <laughs> going to say, Excuse me, I don't want to play wide right, that's not my position, I, I prefer to play up front. <laughs> that just ain't <laughs> yeah. going to happen, so you, know, you just get on with it. Um, but it wasn't my position, I didn't learn that position, you know, as, and it was the fact that I was quite fit, and I did get up and down the flanks quite well. I wasn't a wide and out winger, but I had an eye for a goal, and that's why I stayed in that position for how many games I did for Sunderland. Yeah, what what was it like under Laurie? Because obviously there's a uh, there's a history looking back now for, for there, many there fans. There's a history, yeah, and, and you know it was very difficult to pinpoint what happened. It just didn't gel. Basically, you've got a, mm. an experience, had a lot of experience there. Eric Gates, George Burley, Alan Kennedy, Steve Esky in, in Esfer. You had a lot of experience. You mix that in with the likes of me and Gordon and Gary Hours and. Um, and other players at the time, you know, yeah. young players, uh, Richard Dodd, um, John Cornforth. Um, it just didn't gel for whatever right. reason, it didn't gel. And you know, there was no animosity in the change rooms, it was still good, it, it just didn't happen. And and you can't, you, you know, you just got to move on from that, which we did, sure. Yeah, when, when Dennis came into the building, yeah. In between, obviously, you had Bob Stoker, a, a club legend who. Yeah. Was was hopefully going to keep us up, but didn't quite make it. Was he was he a different character again? Or yeah, I mean, again, you know, what I've just said there, I can't remember too much of it. But Bob was old school. Um, yeah, and he came in and tried to set us up ways that he thought we would win games and survive, and it didn't. It just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. Was Bob? Was it Bob and Charles in the playoffs? In the playoffs, game? yeah, yeah. So Laurie had left, hadn't he? And then. Right. We finished what third bottom, and then had Gillingham yeah. in the in the playoffs, didn't we? And over two legs, it was close, but not close enough. Yeah, did we win that last game three two? I can't. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we'd already been. It was a weird goal. Away, away goals. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right, yeah. So, so we were we we sort of got uh, you know division three first time in our our lives, and and yeah. here we are again. But mm-hmm. but Dennis came in as a young man, early forties or in his forties, yeah. and. Um, yeah. Changed everything around. He he was a a very different character, I would imagine. D- Dennis was totally different. Yeah, um, training was enjoyable, very enjoyable uh, and intense at times. Um, you know, you you put the tackles in as if it was a normal game. I remember getting 
been on the end of, of, of a couple of Dennis te- tackles anyway. And he was manager, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm thinking this is a Friday morning, you know, loosen up at her. And, and he's like, what's in there with tackles? But that's the way he was. But it was enjoyable. He, he, he came into the building um, and got everyone laughing and smiling. And sometimes it was good cop, bad cop because... De- you know, Dennis was serious at times and he was the bad cop. The way Viv Busby, he was the trainer, the coach, and you know, he'd put an arm around you and he was laughing and joking and um and and the the, the combined very well. Um Yeah. But uh, but training was, was fun, you know, and we came into the you know, into the training, everyone was happy and um yeah, it just, just lifted a, a veil of I d I didn't think there was too much problems at the club at the time but he, he came in and I could see you could just see it just everyone just relaxing and um, going again. and get going again basically and yeah, I, I think from yeah. his point of view he just saying well this club can't go any further any lower um, yeah the only way is up as the song goes um, and we did and we did and we, and we, and we romped that league that year I believe absolutely and, and it's interesting you said about Laurie bringing experience because of course Dennis still used the like of Eric Gates and, and yeah brought in John McPhail and, and yeah. people like that who were very experienced, but surrounded him with, you know, you mentioned Gordon and Gary and yourself, but Marco came in that year and he had a good mix about the team then. We did. And, and, and Dennis got the gel, you know, we gelled w- w- well. Um, maybe under Laurie, I don't know, did we go too direct? You know, we weren't using our strengths, you know. Gertie obviously was a big strength and we were we getting the ball to his feet early enough and I, I don't know, but all I do know is that it happened under Dennis and we were getting the ball to Gatesy. Gatesy was seeing passes that nobody else could see <laughs> with Gabbers um, and it worked well. He had the legs, you know, up and down with myself on one side or Paul Atkinson on the other side or whoever played, Gary Hours, good good engine, good strength and we were quite solid at the back under John McPhail and, and John Kay and... and the, yeah, we had, we had Benno and, and Benno, so on, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. And solid base, do you know what I mean? And it worked quick, well. quick, quick turnaround of emotions. You know, twelve months there you are going down. Twelve months later, bouncing back as champions. That was an amazing feeling. I think the motion side of it. Do, yes, you are fully concerned as a player, but I don't think as a player you can. Um, what's the word? You, you, you've got to get out of your mind as quick as you can. Yes, yeah, the fans might you know, emotionally think a bit more of it than we would do. But we were professionals. We we went down. What do you do? Do you, do you mope around and start, you know, sulking and that? Or do you just roll your sleeves up and get the club back up, you know, where it belongs? It didn't even belong in the championship, in my opinion. It belongs in the first division stroke premiership. But sure. we had to get one step at a time and we got back to the championship at the first attempt. It's it's interesting, yeah. That you mentioned that because I had the the privilege of talking to Dennis uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said exactly the same. You, you take it one step at a time, and it's reminiscent of what of what Jack's saying. Um, you know that the first thing to do is remain humble and and yeah. take this league as it is. Don't don't sort of get Billy big boots about it, and, and make sure that we we earn the right to to play. Yeah. So and it's, it's it's nice to see the kids coming through. You know, it gives us opportunity yeah. to see see some of them through. What for, for you as a, as one of our own, if you like, from the academy and stuff? How how did the fans respond with you? With myself personally, yeah. I thought well, looking back, it was at the time I thought they were a bit unfair to me. Um, whereas sometimes if I had a bad game, and don't get me wrong, here, I had many a bad game at times at Sunderland. Uh, you, you know, you hold your hands up, you get on with it. Mm. Um, so you have to be thick skinned so you know whoever Sunderland and that's been proven I think over the last couple of years that whoever comes into Sunderland has to be thick skinned they have to mm. take the criticism and it's been proved over the years as well um, but when myself even if I had a good game um, they were still they were quick on, onto my back you know what I mean but generally they were fine they were fine and you know I would never swap that time ever again you know they were brilliant sure Um when we were winning and the crowd and the noise and all that and the away fans was I mean obviously that that famous incident at Wigan um, just yeah. brilliant just brilliant uh, I just thought they were quick to get on my back for that sure but not, oh, I, think, I think now a lot of them do say to me that now they do know that I gave 100% and I left nothing out there for them you know what I mean so absolutely I mean, I the best games but you know I, I give it I give it all my best shot 
and, and I think that that's what's reminiscent about that side from from sort of coming back. I mean, I remember watching watching that team and and the way that it kind of propelled us through the divisions. Really, I mean, Dennis kind of took us a lot further than just relegate um, promotion that first day. But um, yeah. y- you're right, there, w- there was a there was an intensity to that side, and you you know didn't leave anything behind. Be- yeah. Before we move on, cause I just want to sort of talk about something else. But um, Gordon Armstrong told me to ask you about the pie from the paddock. What's all that about? I know, I know. Um, what's that all about? Well, do you know what? I still do, I don't even know at the time. I believe what happened was that I gave him our sub and I was warming up and Eric Gates or someone like that had, had seen somebody throw this pie at me. Uh, <laughs> and as I'm, as I'm running up and down the touchline, it, it's just missed me, basically. Uh, <laughs> at the time, I hadn't got a clue. Uh, at the time, I would have had a laugh with everybody, but um, I don't even know if Gordon had seen it, but obviously I think it was Gates who had seen it happen and that. Uh, but that's that's life, isn't it? It, it, it? it didn't bother me at the time, and it doesn't bother me now, so I'm not worried. It, it, I'd, love to, I'd love to meet the guy who shot it. Like, I must yeah, have, I was, I'd buy, I was I'd buy him a pint as well and a, and a pie. Maybe somebody will own up to it when, when they hear this. Or, or maybe Gordon can fill you in. Maybe he's maybe, got his number already. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so, so after after Sunderland, because you were there for, what, five five years? Before Chesterfield, about five years at Sunderland? Oh, yeah. Um, I, well, I signed originally as a school, but as an apprentice, 92, and I left 1991. Right. So, yeah, obviously, take two years out for your apprenticeship. So, yeah, seven about seven years, I think, yeah. Fantastic. And then, and then Chesterfield, how, how did that move come about? Well, in hindsight, it was it was a horrible move in hindsight because I had a good start. I mean, I played 40-odd game. I played nearly all, every game that season. Uh, and I got to the back end of that particular season, 91-92 season in April. And actually, Gatie had... I was playing against Carlisle, and Gatie was playing for Carlisle, so he must have left Sunderland then and joined yeah. them. And there was nobody near me in, in, in a game. I just went to close somebody down, and my left knee just gave way. And at the time, I didn't know. I knew it was bad because it hurt. <laughs> And I didn't go down. Um, and I ruptured, ruptured my uh, cruciate ligaments. Um, oh, and I was out for a year because obviously, 92, you know, the, mm. the procedure for the um, cruciate ligaments weren't as advanced as they are now. And it took me a year to get back. Um, right. And then when I got back into the team, which I did get back in the team, we played, you know, we famously went to Liverpool and we were 3 0 up against Liverpool and ended up drawing 4 4. At Liverpool in a cup tie, I played sixty games that season. Um, or just, yeah, forty odd league games that season. So twenty just at the very end of the season before. And John Duncan came in, and I just wasn't his type of player, and I left. Not, not, oh. That was it. So looking back, it was a horrible time. But and the offers never really came in that were suffice. I was offered a one year contract at Swansea, a, a one year contract at Darlington, but. Back in 92, 93, interest rates were very high and my mortgage mm. was something like £900 a month. Or something. <sighs> and it, and it, wasn't on the, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't on the, the wages the footballers are on nowadays and that gobbled a lot of my wages up and I just couldn't afford to do it. So sure. that's when I made the decision to to move away from the game. Because you were games, quite young, weren't you? Then. Yeah, I think I was only 27, yeah. So, so, so uh, what, what sort of held, held sway after football for you? Um, well, I, I did go around to the, a few non-league teams, but I wasn't going to do non-league. I mean, I, I did enjoy my football, but I'm thinking I don't want to be doing non-league. Um, the coaching side of it, it wasn't really up and running then, as in the academies. So, because yeah. the money hadn't really kicked in then, you know, Sky had just come forward. I think ninety two, ninety three season. Um, so I went. I got a job in the finance sector, and I, I remained there for many years, 15 years, before leaving that and becoming the scout, basically. Right, so so football drew you back eventually then? Football, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, the kids have grown up now, so the, the the need to make a regular income money, you know, wasn't as much. Um, although the money with the scout is, is decent, it's, um, you know, no mortgage now and the kids have thrown the nest, so, you know, it's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. So you, you took in a few uh, a few clubs around uh, Chesterfield, where I think you were at Huddersfield, Sheffield United. 
before yeah, we get started. What, what happened was I, I took my coaching badge, uh, level two, uh, through the PFA because I just fancied I did, I did some coaching without my coaching badges. Yeah, and, you know, I thought let's let's just go and do it. So I did it through the PFA and I bumped into Lee Turnbull and I just said, What's out there, coach? And he said, Well, I can't help you there because I'm head of recruitment at, R- at Uddersfield. He says, But we're looking for um, somebody to fill a, a vacancy in the Midlands area. I went, well, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so basically, I went to go and see his boss, um, and his boss says, yeah, all good. And I started in November 2013 at Uddersfield. All right, cool. It's a, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's a lovely club. Um, open. I mean, you can go to the training ground, you can watch the lads train. They're very open and, and transparent about everything there. Um and they've got their rewards. Um, yeah, doing well. Doing, doing well at the really minute. Well. Yeah. Sheffield, Sheffield went, United? Lee, Lee left and went to Sheffield United. And I was right. to go there for a year. That didn't work out with Nigel Atkins. And then went to Wigan for six months. And then Lee got the top job at Scunthorpe and, and took me there with him. So oh, fantastic. that's how scouting career has developed. Fantastic, right place, right time maybe in, in, that, in that sense. Basically, yeah. yeah you know, Brilliant. I went, I went to do a bit of coaching... And it ended up coming out. Coming out yeah. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So as a scout, how, how would you rate the work Sonnen have done this summer? Um, well, the work they've done in the past obviously hasn't come to fruition. I don't know what's happened or how or how they've done it. I don't know. Um, and I don't know who's behind the scenes there now, but there's, there's some of the signings that they have brought in um, seem to be doing well um, and will be good for League One. Yeah, yeah. well, Tony Coton came from Villa Tony, that's in, the, right, in, the, yeah. in the summer. That's right. So he, he's heading it up and uh, okay. Richard, Hill, Richard Hill's come from Eastley with uh, obviously Stuart Donald knowing him and, yeah, yeah. and uh, working with Jack. So it, it sounds like they've got a good balance yeah. in there and, and, and Tony seems to obviously, like you say, know, know the division. Is there anybody that you think we've got that you'd have uh, tried to grab for Scunthorpe? Oh, <laughs> I should put me on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the game I see, I say the Charlton game, the one that stuck out for me was the player that they didn't sign anyway, the, was the kid, uh, at Bally Mumba. You know, it was just, yeah. it was just superb, you know. you know, And, I, and, you, and got to, you've got to give credit to Jack, the manager, mm. for doing that. I mean, how many managers, to be fair, would play a 16-year-old lad on the opening day of the season, red-hot weather, in front of 31,000, <laughs> com, coming off the back of, two or three pretty poor seasons and may- maybe, maybe a hostile crowd. Fair play to him. And I thought he was brilliant that game. I really did. I he, 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 yeah. he was. He was brave. He was the energy, the desire. I thought, to be honest, the first thing I thought was, you're going Premier League, mate. You're going Prem. He's, hopefully he's the hopefully Yeah, the yeah. But you could not stop that kid's progress if he, um, if he keeps developing the way he is and keeps his, you know, he's 16, still only baby. Keeps his feet on the floor uh, and keeps growing and keeps learning and and that uh, he's going to be some player that lad. Yeah, he's, he he looks a real talent and you and you're right. Sort of throw him in when you've got you know the likes of Catamol still at the club and and, yeah. and things like that. I think yeah. it gives him a real you know boost and 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 you're right. He's going to turn 17 in in a few months, so hopefully we'll yeah. get him on a pro contract before everybody else yeah. comes sniffing. But we'll, we'll, we'll Gooch, see. I mean, we I like Gooch and I have seen Gooch about two or three years ago and. He at Leicester under twenty threes, and he absolutely blitzed Leicester. And mm. we tried to get him on loan, or had the possibility. I think I don't know what. So yeah, when we advise players, from that point onwards, it's nothing to do. I mean, obviously that Lee takes over there and that, but I, I had a gooch for me all day. Um, yeah. It, even Honeyman, you know, uh, I quite liked him, but Gooch was the one for me that I thought, yes, he, he someone need this guy in, in League One and. Uh, to, to to push him forward. Yeah, he's he's, he's quite direct, and he's he's certainly got a swagger about him. I'll, I'll give him that. And uh, yeah, not, not, not to, he not has, and not not to give up for that goal was it was amazing how he just launched himself at the ball at the end. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, just prior to that, he'd made a little mistake with the ball yeah. under his foot, and you no. Know, but instead of like sulking or whatever, he's gone bang. I'm I'm in the box here. The left back's whipped in a superb ball. Yeah, and he's got on, the desire to get on the end of it. You know. Fairy tale stuff. So. Well, it, it gives Jack a great start, and obviously we went down to Luton, which you know um, was a was a tough game, tough yeah. away game, and um, 
for, for long periods, I thought we were going to nick it again and, and yeah. kind of just sort of came away with a draw. But but Jack yeah. seemed reasonably confident. Win your home games, draw your away games, you'll be there or thereabouts. So, well, um, if, you, yeah, if, you look at, if you look at the history of League One for the last two or three seasons, and I've seen a lot of League One games over the last two or three seasons, if you're organised uh, and get good shape to you, and have a little bit of guile and a little bit of craftiness up front and creativity up front, you'll be there, thereabouts. I really honestly think that. I mean, Scunthorpe, we've been up there the last two seasons, just missed out in the playoffs. Well organised, strong physically. Burton, the same. Shrewsbury's team's broken up now, but the team last year, again, well organised, a little bit of creativity, creativity in the midfield, stroke mm. up front. Um, you'll be up there. Um, yeah, I hope so. Did anybody else stand out? Because a lot of people are tipping Barnsley for good things this season, perhaps. And um, well, the tip, I've, yeah, I think Barnsley will be up there. Uh, I think Peterborough will be up there, and a team I watched on Saturday and beat us last night will be up there. Doncaster, um, yeah, Doncaster will win more games than they'll lose, um, but they might get a few. The way they're, they're very open and very uh, extravagant in the way they play, um, but they play very well. So I, I after after just one game, I think they'll be up there. But but Sunderland will be up there. Sunderland will be up there. I've got I've got no doubt about that. What What about your club then? Without giving too much away before Sunday, obviously, is so, is there Scunthorpe, anything again? You know, going back to what I said at the beginning, I, I, I've not seen them much. You know, I'm only getting what I hear off Lee, and when we have meetings together with the manager, we have changed. We have we've had a lot of ingoings and outgoings. I know, I, don't quote me on that. I think it was 15 players have gone out and 10 have come in. So. You know, it, it, although it's very similar to uh, Sunderland in, in terms of personnel changeover, um, I believe we will finish probably mid-table upwards um, okay. on, on what I'm hearing. And I think that would be a good for us because of the turnover of, of players. We took a gamble with a few young lads and a few, you know, one or two from non-league. So it depends how they get on. Um, mix that in with a lot of experience in there. And yeah, I, I think we'll be mid-table to... to to top half, you know, playoff position. We'll be in that eight, nine, ten position. That's what I yeah. believe. In. That's so. that's good. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned about getting players. I mean, Peterborough seem to be the masters at pulling players out of lower league and yeah. making a profit on them. And yeah. how, how do they do it? Crikey! Yeah, well, again, it's you know, again, it's just watching players, getting out there, watching them, having an opinion, backing yourselves, and make a judgment and back yourself. I do believe Steve Evans has gone in there and just wasn't happy with everything and got rid of a lot and brought a lot in. So, um, but again, he play, you know he manages his teams. You know has the you know lot, lots of passion there. Yeah, um, which is quite visible from the t- from the touchline at times. I think he's an attack waiting to happen. That guy at times really, <laughs> really goes on. But uh, that's how his teams play. And I you know I think they'll be up there based on that. But with, with again a bit of creativity in that team, they'll they'll be up there. Yeah, is, is is it changed much since since obviously playing in Division Three at the time under Dennis and watching a lot of football in, at League One? Has, has it has it changed a lot for lot quality wise perhaps or physical I, side? I don't know. I think it has to. I mean, when you're playing the game, you're involved with your own game and the team's game, and you know, no disrespect, at time scouting, I wouldn't have had a clue what scouting was all about. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, now looking at the teams compared to what we played, I th- I think yeah. If you put me in that position now, you know, with the training and with all the GPS they can do and the monitoring, I think I would have been a better player by 10, 15%. So everybody right. else would be as well. So I would say, yes, the standard is better. Um, yeah. And the foreign players are coming into the game and our better English players are, are, are you know, coming into the Championship, Stroke League One. Um, so, yeah, I would say the standard is uh, but only slightly, only slightly. Yeah, yeah, OK. Any any predictions? Are you going to put your neck on the block for, for Sunday? For, su- for Sunday? Yeah. Um, I've got to say a draw, haven't I, really? <laughs> I'm going to sit on the fence with this one. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. OK, all right. Just out of interest, then, uh, you mentioned your kids growing up. Are you all still Sunland fans or have you changed allegiance or...? Are you sticking with Borough because that's your hometown? Or well, the question you asked there: Are you still Sunderland fans? I've never been a Sunderland fan. <laughs> bit presumptuous, wasn't it? A bit presumptuous, <laughs> and, and, and my kids were never going to be Sunderland fans. I met my ex. I mean, I married a, a lady who worked at the club, and her mums. They're all Sunderland fans, and uh, they tried to get Jordan and Gabby, my two children, Sunderland fans. But 
the Borough fans. They had no Aye. choice. When I was when I was out the game and there were kids, I took them to the Borough games when they were in the Premier League and they loved the atmosphere there. But to be fair, you know, they love watching Sunderland results and Borough's results. And also the Newcastle. We, I like to see all the North East clubs doing well. I know a lot of people in North East wouldn't agree with me, but I like to see all the North East teams doing well. Um, wouldn't that's be great, fair, wouldn't it be great to see Borough, Newcastle and Sunderland in the, prim, in the Premier League? That'd be fantastic. I'll take, I'll take two of them, Paul. I'm not sure about the third night. <laughs> <laughs> but no, listen, thanks ever so much for, for joining us and uh, really appreciate your time. I hope it goes well for the rest of the season at Scunthorpe and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Mark. Thank All you. right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. So, Paul Lemon, uh, former Sunderland <laughs> midfielder, happily going for a draw on uh, on Sunday. I think I'll uh, opt for a, a home win now that Paul's gone. I won't tell him that. But, yeah, I think we probably have enough for, to beat Scunthorpe on, on Sunday. And um depends on how the, the team line up after the, the cup tie, of course. But, um, yeah, it sounds very positive. And, and Paul's obviously got experience in, in this league and from playing here and and scouting and, and seeing the teams around us so it sounds positive that he's backing us to do well this season so onwards and upwards we look forward to Sunday and we look forward to what Jack is building and we hope for big three points so join us again next time when hopefully Graham will be back and let us know how you found it today thanks for listening 